crisis in endangered languages first came under my radar um, at the beginning of this century, uh, in 2003 to be exact. I was uh, director of research programs at the National Endowment for the Humanities, and one day I got ambassadors from the National Science Foundation, and they were talking about possible joint activities, cooperative uh, projects. And among those cooperative projects, they uh, mentioned doing something about endangered languages. Languages are deeply important to the humanities. Uh, almost everything that the humanities study, history, philosophy, religion, literature, are made of language. The techniques, the tools of the humanities are for the most part language tools. We think in language uh, and we try to find understanding and insight by linguistic means. And so languages uh, were central to the humanities in my way of thinking. Uh, and so when I heard about endangered languages and the NSF people were telling me this, this famous fact that uh, by the end of the century, of that century, uh, half the human languages would disappear. Uh, I thought, now this is a job worth taking on. I got myself transferred over to the National Science Foundation, and we began working on uh, creating joint projects between the uh, National Science Foundation and the National Endowment for the Humanities. Uh, the three people involved with this, uh, Joan Mailing, the director of the linguistics program at NSF, uh, Anna Pertola, who you'll meet in a moment in this film, also at NSF, and I decided that we would go out for lunch every Tuesday afternoon. In that little group, we found enough um, savvy, enough, enough determination to actually push uh, this joint program through both of the bureaucracies, uh, the National Science Foundation and the National Endowment for the Humanities. We wanted specifically to focus on the question of documenting these languages. Uh, it's been going on now for, uh, for 10 years, uh, and I would say that uh, it's really it's driven by some fairly important factors. Obviously on the top, there's language endangerment. This in itself is a shocking problem uh, and, a, and a kind of impoverishing of the human race. Below that, uh, the even deeper level, is the problem of um, uh, language extinction. Uh, that for many communities, it's very likely, or very possible at least, that the language that their parents, and grandparents, and so on spoke will simply not be spoken. But I would say there's an even deeper problem. Uh, that really drives me, and that is the threat of language erasure. That uh, in a hundred years or two hundred years, we may not even know that these languages existed. We will have erased the human record uh, uh, of something profoundly important. So what drives me in this effort and I hope it drives every community thinking about uh, putting together a strong documentation program, is the thought that these riches, these human riches, have to be preserved, and understood, and shared.